today's episode, I tell you about one of the amazing friendships I had that blessed my life when I was in high school. I share the chorus of a song with you that I wrote over 20 years ago. And we talk about three reasons why we need each other. Stay tuned. Welcome to Stories of Hope in Hard Times, the show that explores how people endure and even thrive in difficult times, all with God's help. I'm your host, Tamara K. Anderson. Join me on a journey to find inspiring stories of hope and wisdom learned in life's hardest moments. Hello and welcome to another episode of Tamara's Takeaways. I'm your host, Tamara K. Anderson, on the Stories of Hope and Hard Times podcast. And today I'm going to talk about the three reasons we need each other. The first reason is we need good friendships in our lives. Columnist David Brooks said, Most of our society's great problems flow from people not feeling seen and known. There is a core trait that we all have to get better at, and that is the trait of seeing each other deeply and being deeply seen. Pause and think about that for a moment, that we need to learn to see each other deeply and allow ourselves to be deeply seen. Now, this is easier said than done because often we've been hurt by people before. And because of that, we tend to be more cautious about who we let see the true and the real us. Let me tell you a story about a friend in high school who really helped me feel seen and just loved me in spite of all my quirks and weaknesses. And this is my friend, Shanna. And Shanna was one of those friends who I ended up seeing like almost every day of my uh, senior year. And I was really blessed because of it. I, I wrote about her in a paper when I was describing my teenage years. And here was one of the cool things that I wrote about her. I said, she made me talk about my feelings, something no one had ever made me do. She helped me talk through the hurt and discuss my dreams and my hopes. She even helped me learn to talk about guys and express my feelings about them. Expressing my feelings to people was a new concept to me because I had always kept them wrapped up inside. We grew closer and closer as the year wore on, being bonded by serious and humorous experiences. Shanna became my best friend and she understood me. Having a friend like her during my high school years, when I was such a formative, I was at such a formative time of life, was so crucial for me. I needed somebody that, because I was lonely, could listen and hear me and see me, and and she was one of those types of people to me, and I'm so thankful for that. So the cool thing is. Jan and I don't talk for a year and all of a sudden we pick up the phone or we show up at each other's house and it's like we pick up right where we left off. And it's wonderful to have friends like that where they're just your friends for life. You've been through different challenges and experiences, but you know that you can talk to them about anything. And it's just great to have friends like that. One of the keys, though, to having those deep friendships is that you have to be willing to open up. It's it's a risk. Um, but you can't have a deep friendship unless you're willing to open up and to give that other person that same blessing of them being able to open up, them being able to open up and show you the real them. And that's where connection takes place and understanding and you feel like, okay, this person gets me. And so one of the greatest gifts we can give at this time where we start to think about giving is the gift of self, giving of who you really are and being accepting as you listen to other stories of who they really are. So we need good friendships. That's principle number one. The second thing that we really need is we need each other because of strengths and weaknesses. 
They're complementary. And I don't know about you, but as I've worked on different committees and stuff like that through the years, I have seen how different people bring different skills and talents to the table. And it's really cool when, for example, I worked on a committee when our family lived in Texas called the Faiths Together Committee. And it was wonderful. We put on an annual event and it was phenomenal, but we had different representations from all different religions in the Houston area. And it was phenomenal because different people had different strengths. And so one person was really good at getting, taking the notes and putting the program together. And another person was really good at decorating. And another person was really good at organizing the fundraiser. If you're doing like the canned food drive along with the presentation, you know, they were really good at that. My strength lay in music. And so I was put in charge of the little choir that we had. And so it's really cool that we each have different strengths and weaknesses. And when you put people together, those strengths and weaknesses make us whole, I guess I should say. None of us have to be 100% perfect at every single quality that we can have. We can each have these different abilities and use those to build a community of love and faith and hope. And I think it's so cool that God has made us this way and that we each have these unique gifts and talents Mother Teresa said a really cool quote. She said, you can do what I cannot do. I can do what you cannot do. Together, we can do great things. Isn't that beautiful that we as a whole, as a community, as friends, as neighbors, we can work together and do great things. So the second thing we need as we need each other is we need each other because we have different strengths and weaknesses. And you can help me with something that I need help with and perhaps I can return the favor and help you with something you need help with. Jet Li said, I believe the world is one big family and we need to help each other. The third reason we need each other is I believe we are God's ministering hands on the earth. And I love this quote by Jeffrey R. Holland, who is a religious leader. He said, when we speak of those who are instruments in the hands of God, we are reminded that not all angels are from the other side of the veil. Some of them we walk with and talk with here, now, every day. Some of them reside in our own neighborhoods. Some of them gave birth to us. And in my case, one of them consented to marry me. Indeed, heaven never seems closer than when we see the love of God manifested in the kindness and devotion of people so good and so pure that angelic is the only word that comes to mind. Isn't that beautiful that there are angels around us and these angels are people we interact with and they are often the instrument of God's hands for us. I happened to read a post from a friend on social media over the Thanksgiving holiday, and it touched my heart so deeply because she wanted to give thanks for the many people, the angels in her life who had helped her as she's been going through breast cancer. And this is, I can only imagine that this has been a really hard year to be going through something like that when we've had to be more isolated from each other, but she spoke of the angels and gave such a beautiful tribute to people who had been angels in her life by sharing with her a simple text that she was loved by visiting her at the right moment. I'm sure masks were involved. 
She described the phone call she got from a, a someone she didn't even know who had been through best breast cancer and was just able to give her so much hope and comfort. And she also spoke of thanks for an angel who left something on her doorstep or one that left something sweet in her mailbox that lifted her and helped her feel like she wasn't alone. She was thankful for the angels in scrubs, doctors, nurses, therapists who had been there and helped her through her treatments. She was thankful for people who became friends that she met in the waiting rooms because they too were going through the exact same thing. And that one reminded me of a scripture in Proverbs that says, A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. So sometimes we make friends when we are in our hardest moments, perhaps going through breast cancer or some other thing like COVID-19. Maybe you've made a friend during COVID-19 that you never would have thought of. This friend carried on that she was also thankful for the angels who had prayed for her and continue to pray for her. And she concludes by saying, quote, there truly are angels among us. And I loved that. I loved that God uses ordinary regular people to become angels and minister to others of his children here on earth. One of the most beautiful invitations in scripture is Christ's invitation that we love one another as he has loved us. And I think we see that in service. So those are the three things we need each other. We need those first, those deep and good friendships. We need each other because we have different strengths and weaknesses. And third, sometimes we just need to be ministered to by angels. And I'm so thankful for that. I'm thankful that God has given us one another to lift and serve and love each other through this difficult journey of life. Many years ago, I was in charge of helping pull off a Christmas program for the women in my congregation. And I happened to um, pen a little song or two that we were able to perform at that wonderful Christmas presentation. And one of the choruses of one of the songs I wrote at that point has kind of been, um, has come to mind in the last week or two, as I've been thinking about how we can love and serve God by serving his children here on earth. And so I'd love to sing really quickly just the chorus to this song. It's called, If Any Serve Me. And it goes like this. If any serve me, let him follow me and do the works that I do. Strengthen the feeble knees and ease a burden or two. Lift up those who've fallen down and give to those in need. If any serve me, help my lambs to feed. Anyway, the reason that's been going through my mind is because when we love and serve our fellow friends and companions on this earth, that is what God would do if he were here. And so it's neat that we can strengthen and love and serve those around us by doing little things. And my invitation to you as I close this podcast is that as we look at beginning this holiday season where we think more of love and joy and service, my invitation to you is that you reach out and perform an act of friendship and love sometime in the next week. In fact, I encourage you to do it today or tomorrow because I don't want you to forget. (laughs) And it doesn't have to be anything big. Maybe it's a text. Maybe it's dropping something on someone's doorstep. Maybe it's listening to someone and letting them see you and letting you see them. 
because we all need to be seen and heard and felt and loved. And I know that as we do this, we will be blessed. I think one of the craziest things about this pandemic has been the isolating feelings that we feel. And if we can get beyond that and find ways to reach out, and people are doing it so creatively via Zoom, via text, via FaceTime, you see people reaching out in the most amazing ways. But as we do this, we are not only lifting others, but we're lifting ourselves up. And and so that is my invitation to you guys. We need each other. And as we work together, we can make it through and end this year with a bang. Hope on friends. Hey, thanks so much for listening to today's show. I know that there are many of you out there that are going through a hard time and I hope you found things that have been useful today as you listen to the podcast. If you would like to access the show notes from today's podcast, visit my website. It is storiesofhopepodcast.com. That is where you'll find favorite quotes from today's episode and shareable memes. And those are fun because you can share them with your friends on social media. You will also find the links mentioned throughout today's episode, so you don't have to remember what those were. And also all the tips that were shared. Sometimes tips are shared so much throughout an episode, you forget what were those great things. So go to the show notes, storiesofhopepodcast.com to look up these fantastic resources. You know, if someone kept coming to mind during today's episode, perhaps that means that you should share this with them. Maybe there was a story shared or a tip that they really, really need to hear. So go ahead and share this episode with them. May God bless you, especially if you are struggling with hope to carry on and with the strength to keep going when things get tough. Remember to walk with Christ and he will help bear that burden. Above all else, Remember, God loves you.